In this presentation, I'm going to go over debt to equity conversion, where our debt here is bonds payable and there are liabilities on the balance sheet, and we want to reduce the amount of bonds payable that are outstanding. So what we're going to do here is we're going to give or exchange to our bondholders stock, and in turn, they're going to give us the bonds back. So they're going to get the stock, and they're going to return the bonds back to us. Now, what I'm going to go through here is I'm going to show the conversion using the book value method and then show how to record the conversion expense. So the first thing we have to do here is we have to calculate our carrying value on those bonds. So when we issued uh, those bonds, they had $100,000 face value here and we received $104,000 worth of ca $100 in cash here. And then we came up with this balancing account here, which is a valuation account to bonds payable and that increases our bonds payable and that was for four $4,100 here, the balancing amount. So what we've done here is we've amortized this premium on this bonds payable down to $2,674. And then our carrying value at the bond at the time of the conversion here would be $102,673. That's after the amortization of that premium to bonds payable. So let's go in and let's look at how we'd uh, use the book value method for converting these bonds. All right, let's go through the mechanics of this bond conversion. And here we're going to use the book value method. Remember that, the book value method. So number one here, we're, the bondholders are going to convert $40,000 worth or 40% worth of the convertible bonds into the issuer's $5 par value common stock. And we'll calculate our numbers here. The number of bonds converted would be the $40,000 worth divided by $1,000 per bond or 40 bonds exchanged here total. And the number of common shares or common stock that we issue would be the 40 bonds. And in this case, we're going to issue a, the uh, bondholders 10 shares of common stock for each bond. So that would be a total of 400 common shares or common stock issued. So we go up here for our, our bond payable as our liability here on the balance sheet and we reduce that by 40% or uh, decrease it by $40,000 here. Now this premium of the bonds payable would also be reduced by this 40% here and that would is based on whatever the carrying value is in this premium or discount at the time of conversion. So uh, that amounted to $1,069, that 40% of the carrying value here in this premium to bonds payable. So our total carrying value here of the converted bonds would be the $40,000 up here in the bonds payable plus this premium amount of $1,069 for $41,069. And of course that would be the same here as the $102,000 total times 40% or $4,169. Now in our common stock here and stockholders equity, we would increase that by the number of shares that we issued here are 400 shares times a $5 par value common stock for a value here of $2,000. Now our balancing entry here would be to additional paid in capital for the common stock and we'd increase that by the carrying value of the bonds less this par value up here. So we'd have the $41,069 here, the carrying value of the bonds that we converted, minus the $2,000 par value of that common stock we issued for a total of $39,069. So these are the journal entries here in the mechanics for exchanging uh, those bonds payable for common stock. Okay, here I'm going to show you how to read a debt conversion expense here. And this is an extra expense or an extra amount of cash we had to pay to our bondholders in order that they convert those bonds into the common stock. So what we did here is we had to pay our bondholders an extra $5,000 here. So we credit or reduce cash for that amount of $5,000. And then over here, uh, as our an expense was as part of net income on the income statement, we increased that by $5,000. That was the debt conversion expense. And that's a period expense. And that we uh, recognize here for that extra uh, amount of money that we had to pay for them to convert those bonds. So remember here, this expense here is closed at the end of the period here. So we would credit that and we would debit retained earnings. So we would reduce retained earnings by that amount here. So you can see that uh, 
we had to induce this bond conversion here. And by doing that, it cost us uh, $5,000 in cash. We recognized it as an expense item for the period, and that reduces our retained earnings, or that reduces the stockholders' equity by that amount here. So going over here in summary, we decreased our liabilities by $41,900. We increased our equity in the common stock accounts here for 41, the same amount, $41,069. And but in the same term here, we reduced our retained earnings or we reduced stockholders' equity by that $5,000 amount here. That was our additional conversion expense that we recorded. So that's the basic entries here for inducing a bond conversion where we would uh, pay an additional amount to our bondholders to convert these bonds over to common stock.